Hey guys, welcome back from Carly at the Herbothecary and it's that time of year, it hasn't stopped raining and it's snivel season. Myself and my happy funky forage monkeys have been out looking for some wild medicinals to help us tackle this problem. So, here we go! Recipe number one I advise starting early in the season when you're Echinacea purpurea. Now, mine I grow at home, however, I grew them from seeds of a flower I found growing wild. And we will be turning these into a tincture to use later. So at the beginning of spring, we can pick these small little flowers and the fresh leaves. And then as the season progresses, we'll come back and we will harvest the roots from the dried flowers and the seeds from their tips. Echinacea purpurea has been used for millennia for its flu-fighting benefits. You can use the flowers, the seeds, the leaves, the roots in a straight-up tea. However, we will be making a tincture today to preserve and concentrate those benefits for further use. To make a tincture, you require one jar, your plant matter, and alcohol. Now I'm happy to use a cheap bottle of vodka, however you can source a food grade alcohol should you wish. Grind plant matter in your food blender and pop in a jar, cover with alcohol, put the lid on and shake every couple of days for about six weeks. After six weeks, strain the plant matter, decant it into a dripper bottle of your choice and keep it safe for future use. I pop mine in the fridge. Tip number two, as with most of my videos, is maintain a healthy diet and keep your vitamins and minerals at a healthy level. This will keep your immune system healthy. So we have been collecting and tincturing all through spring and summer and now we are going to put them to use in our second recipe. So you will need the juice of one whole large organic lemon, one large chunk of organic ginger, you can peel it however I just like to slice it and chuck it in and a spoon or two of raw honey for its antimicrobial, antibacterial, throat soothing and sweetening properties. Boil a pan of water and allow it to cool. Add your ginger, lemon juice and a few drops of the echinacea tincture we made a few months ago to your mix and add hot water. In this case, ginger is believed to have anti-inflammatory properties and the ability to reduce pain in muscles. Whereas honey is packed with antioxidants and antibacterial and antifungal properties. And while I enjoy my tea, I'm going to use half of the eucalyptus that I was lucky to come across. And that is great for its medicinal and cold treating properties. So we're going to use half of that in a tincture as well. And I will use the rest in a item later. This next one I'm sneaking in and I hope you won't mind. But I strongly believe in the benefits of turmeric or cumin that's or curcumin that's in it. So I hope you go and do some research of your own. Today we are using it for its inflammatory benefits. So uh, and we will turn it into what they call golden milk afterwards. I'd only start with a small amount to begin with, just in case you really don't like it. So pop your turmeric in a pan. Don't forget your black pepper. This activates the inflammatory properties. We'll need a spoonful of um, a coconut oil and we will need some water till you have a runny paste and then we're going to heat that on medium high until it starts to bubble. Once it starts to bubble, turn it down and continue to mix until it makes a paste. Decant that into a jar, last one to two weeks and add it with any milk of your preference, almond, normal milk if you have to, but that is extremely beneficial. And I add a little live honey to sweeten. Not only have elderberries been used as a cure for colds for millennia, but they are high in vitamin A, C, potassium, calcium and folate. 
easily identified by their little blackberries on red stems on an album type form you can harvest them freeze them and pick the berries off like I do or get them dried pop them in a pan add water to cover and allow them to simmer for 30 to 40 minutes smush them with a potato smusher and then grind remaining fluid through a sieve until you get just the liquid once it is cool to just warm enough to melt the honey add honey to taste and bottle up and save it for the cold season keep it in the fridge mine lasts up to three months but you shall see moving swiftly on to our next recipe and we will be making our own menthol balm so as before we will need our oils our coconut oil and we will need our plant matter on this occasion we are using locally foraged eucalyptus leaves and mint from our garden although if you cannot find these fresh you can use essential oils as this is a topical balm Heat your oils using a double boiler system. I've used coconut and almond for this. When the oils are warm, it's time to add our plant matter. You don't want the oil hot because it will just burn the plant matter. Heat for up to an hour on low, longer if you can. Remove plant matter and add a tablespoon to two tablespoons of wax depending on the thickness. And then I just add an extra little essential oil at the end. Decant into a jar of your choice and allow to cool into a balm. Which brings us to my favorite part, nature's chemist. There are many plants out there high in things like bioflavonoids, minerals and vitamins that have been used for millennia to fight colds, flus, bronchitis. They obviously have lots of other uses too, but today we'll be discussing a few that specifically help with cold and flu symptoms. First on our list is wood sorrel, extremely high in vitamin C. The oxalis has been used for millennia to treat colds. It is easily identified by its cluster of or grouping of three heart-shaped leaves and a yellow or violet trumpet-like flower with five petals. Once certain of your identification, stems, leaves, flowers and pods can all be used. These can be eaten raw or added to stews, however today we are going to pop them in a cup of tea. Boil your water, allow it to cool slightly, then add your plant matter, steep for 5 minutes and enjoy. Use sparingly as the overconsumption is believed to inhibit the body's ability to uh, process and absorb calcium. Number two is often confused for the wood sorrel as it also has three leaves, however they are oval and usually contain chevron. These are red clover, however I must issue a warning here. Although its plethora of phytochemicals make it an extremely useful treatment in many areas, including respiratory issues such as asthma, bronchitis, whooping cough, they can also result in the thinning of the blood so if you have clotting issues maybe avoid it or if you don't normally have clotting issues stop taking at least a month before surgery secondly red clover contain phytoestrogens which are a plant-based estrogen and probably shouldn't be used by anybody with any hormone based issues i suffer from endometriosis myself and i've never had any issues but i would say do your research first and try at your own risk so on to identification similar to the sorrel we usually have a grouping of three leaves however these have a lighter chevron the flowers make a beautiful and healthy addition to any salad however today we are going to be plucking them off and making tea next on the list is the hip of the dog rose extremely high in vitamin c and believed to fight inflammation and pain these are the fruit left over when the rose dies back. If you're picking them before the first frost, just pop them in the freezer to mimic the seasonal change. 
They can be found in most woody areas and grow more like brambles than the cultivar breeds. Today we are just popping some of our frozen ones in some hot water and making tea. And the last one on the list I think is an opportunity for us all to learn together. I have heard of meadow sweet, which I believe is being used for respiratory issues, colds and bronchitis. Um, I don't know that much about it and I've never come across it. So if anybody wants to add some comments, here's the time. Looking forward to your comments and thank you guys for coming back to the Hobothicary with me, Carly and my happy funky forage monkeys.